So this is a graph of a normal distribution with mean 200 units and a standard deviation 75 units, okay? Now this means that 100% of the values of the variable are covered between the graph and the x-axis. Therefore, the total area under this curve is one unit, so if we treat that as proportion, okay? Now, the total area under the curve is one unit and the mean is right here at the center. So because of the symmetry of the graph, uh, what will happen? the area to the left of 200 would be 0.5, okay? Or 50% of the area is to the left of 200. In the same manner, 50% area or the other half is going to be to the right of 200, okay? Now, let's say we have uh, to do this, answer the question, that what is the area under this curve to the left of x equals 100? Or in other words, what proportion of the values of this variable are located to the left of x equals 100? Now, one way to do this is to go ahead and transform x to a standard score for you know, using this transformation rule for normal distribution. That is z is x minus mu over sigma where mu is the mean of the population, which is 200 in this example, and sigma is the standard deviation, which is 75 in this example, okay? So what you do, first you compute z by substituting x equals 100, and that comes out to be approximately negative 1.33. Then you can use a table, and this is a you know, typical looking cumulative normal curve areas table, and you will use it in the following manner, that, see you have, you look at negative 1.33 as I showed you, and then go to the table, these values on the margin are the values for z, now you are looking for negative 1.33, so negative 1.3 is right here, locate that, okay? I mean, this is the area that we are trying to find, right? Ne to the left of negative 1.33. So you go to the right of negative 1.3 and just go to the second, locate the second digit here. So this value corresponds to negative 1.33. That is the area to the left of negative 1.33 is given by the number at this location, which is how much? 0 .9, 0 0.09.17.59, okay? So this means that the area to the left of z equals negative 1.33 under the standard normal curve, whose mean is zero and a standard deviation is one, is 0 0.091759, which when translated to this distribution, okay? becomes the area to the left of x equals 100 because negative 1.33 corresponded with x equals 100, okay? So, or then your answer is about 9.1759% of the values of the variable are less than 100 units. We can use our calculator to answer the same question, okay? Now let us use the graphing calculator, that or TI-84, that's what I'm using right now and that's what I got. So in this case, what you can do is we are talking about distributions. So just go to distributions and normal being very frequently used is, is right here on the top. Now we are going to choose the option normal CDF, okay? and first it wants the left end point, but here the problem is this, that for the left end point, you can see that we don't really know how far to the left is it going to go, because it just keeps on going forever with this x-axis as its asymptote, never mind the world if you didn't hear of it, okay? So what we do is, we will just go ahead and give it the a smallest 
possible number that this calculator can handle. All right, that's my left value. Then I got a 100, okay? Then enter the mean and then st enter the standard deviation, okay? So what you have, you have almost the same value and this and this are different because the use of Z table did what? Rounded the values to two digits after the decimal and this calculation is going much farther, okay? Now, let's examine, let's see this here. That is, how can we answer more questions? Or let's examine the other feature that we have here, this inverse norm, okay? Now, notice this, 100 is 9.18th percentile of this distribution, all right? And inverse norm would do this, say you went ahead and gave it the same value, and I'm go doing it in a typical way you do with these calculators, that is this answer I put in here, okay? Then I put the mean, and then the standard deviation, okay? I get almost the same value, 100, don't I, right? So that's how you use the inverse normal feature in here, okay? So, which gives us almost the same value, okay? Now, let's answer another question for the same distribution that we would like to find the third quartile, which is the 75th percentile, all right? So that is this is what we want, what the 75th percentile for this distribution is, and I have used this calculator to answer it in the following manner. That is, see, I just go to inverse norm, right? Or I could have done second enter and gotten the same value. I'm looking for the 75th percentile of and notice this, I'm putting the percentile, the percent value as a proportion, okay? And I'm entering the parameters and I should get this value that way, okay? All right, okay. Now say I wanted to use the table, I just have to do a little more algebra. That is, see, first I have to find the Z because the table talks in terms of Z. So we will just go down through these area values and locate the number that's closest to 0.75 and then go towards the margin. Notice we are doing backward calculation here. So here I have 0.6 and here I have 0.07. That gives us Z approximately 0.67. But our objective is to find X and X and Z are related by this, per, this transformation and I know the mu and sigma for this, so I can substitute these guys here and multiply by 75 to get that. And then what you do, just as you did in your algebra one, just add 200 to both the sides, and here you get the third quartile by using the Z table. And of course, it's slightly different than that, and at the same time, notice this. Uh, this one, the calculator answer is a better answer because here we are rounding the Z values off to two digits after the decimal sign, okay? Now say we have to compute the percentage of values that are between 100 and 250. So if we are using the calculator, let's go to normal CDF, okay? Put the first endpoint, what's that? 100, all right, then put the next one, which is 250, then put the mean in, and then the standard deviation, okay? So here, what does it tell you? That about 65.63% of the values are in between these two. And if you would like to use the Z table, you had the area to the left of 100, you can get and get the Z value for 250 and get the area to the left of 250, take the difference, your answer will be close to this number, okay?